Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. A few weeks ago I had a really nice litter of long-tailed or longicata boas. Today I want to give you guys an update on how this litter is doing. We'll look at the parents of the litter, I'll get up my close-up lens and we'll get up close and personal with some of the babies, and I'll say a little bit more about how the process of rehoming them will go as they'll be available probably in a couple months. If you're new to the channel, this is the place for information about all aspects of keeping and breeding boas in captivity. So if you like what you see, please consider subscribing. It really helps the growth of the channel and I greatly appreciate your support. So I had this litter a few weeks ago. I had 17 baby longicata boas and they're all doing really well. They're now, all of them but one is feeding. Um, they are feeding on live fuzzy mice and most of them have taken it with no problem. Sometimes, you know, a few babies just take a little longer to start feeding. So it's, you know, pretty much normal. And so they're gonna eat another couple times and probably shed for a second time. And at that point, they'll probably be ready for their new homes. So this is a first time breeding from a pair that I got uh, that was bred by Sonia Komu. And they are from Vin Russo's bloodline. And this is actually the mother of the litter. So she was born in 2016 and uh, she's doing great. She actually put back on quite a bit of the weight that she had lost. She looks uh, a little thin still, you know, but she definitely has put on some weight, you know, eaten quite a number of times, well, a few times at least since she had that later. And she's, you know, been ravenously, rav, ravenously hungry as you would expect. And so this is a really beautiful female, probably my favorite of my adult longicatas. She just has this beautiful dark color, these really amazing looking head markings. And then you can see all the speckling on her belly. Just gorgeous, gorgeous example of a longicata. You can see she's mostly, you know, this dark black and these, you know, charcoal colors, but there's also kind of this um, yellowish caramel looking color between her saddles. Just a really beautiful boa. These are known as long tail boas since they have the longest tail of any boa relative to their overall length. And these are a great kind of medium sized boa. So this is a typical size adult. She's about six feet long. So they're not quite a dwarf, but they're definitely not a giant either. They're kind of a semi dwarf or medium size locality. And they're really undemanding as captives. You know, they don't regurgitate like the true red tails. They're not aggressive like some other boas. You know, they um, just very docile and, you know, easy to keep boa, you know, that doesn't have very demanding husbandry requirements. So a good boa for someone that's maybe not, doesn't have quite as much experience as someone that might be keeping like a true red tail. Probably the most noteworthy thing about these longicata boas, other than their dark, dark coloration, is the fact that they're not born with this coloration. They're born much lighter in color and they acquire the coloration over time. With each shed, they get a little bit darker until as adults, they have this nice, beautiful, dark color. In fact, we're gonna take a look at some of the babies in a minute, so you'll see how different the babies look, but uh, you, don't, you can't tell exactly what the adults are gonna look like when they're babies, but when you buy a baby, you can be confident that it's not gonna look like that when it reaches its full size. So even though the babies look considerably different than this animal, uh, and I'll show you the father of the litter at the end of the video so you can see him. When these babies reach full size, they're gonna look more like this. You know, they're gonna have this much darker coloration. So with that in mind, let's take a look at a few of the babies. Here's a baby lungicata, and these animals are a few weeks old now, but you can see how different they look from the mother. Just overall a much lighter coloration much less of the black pigment that comes in over time. And you can see just more of a characteristic saddle shape as you would see in other types of boas. They do already have kind of an anerythristic look. Some of them have a little bit of red in the tail, so they're not true anerythristic. There actually is an anerythristic form of longicata, but these are not it. These are just the wild type uh, form of longicata. And so you can almost think of these as the uh, naturally occurring form of the IMG or increasing melanin gene morph. And so like the IMG boas, these animals get darker with each shed 
until at several years of age when they reach their adult size they have this really a much darker coloration and then you can see how chill this animal is he's just kind of hanging out here these animals in general are pretty chill they don't you know move around a whole lot they're not really irascible they're just general generally mellow and docile animals which really adds to their pet uh, qualities and their overall uh, you know usefulness or suitability as a pet there's a side shot and this animal is still just kind of hanging out there this animal has kind of more of a slightly more brownish overall tannish brownish coloration some of the other ones have more of a grayish blackish coloration which I'll show you in a, you know in a couple minutes but this one is just kind of more of a brownish overall this is not what this animal will look like at maturity this animal will be much darker and look more like the parents Here's another example of a baby from the litter. This one I notice has like these really nice kind of symmetrical blocky saddles, almost like the father who I'll show you at the end of the video. But just another nice example of a long tail boa. This one isn't really moving that much either. Like I said, they're pretty docile and they just kind of hang out. They're pretty mellow and not really very active or irascible boas, just a nice calm animal that makes a great pet. Give him a little nudge, see if I can get him moving. He's not going to move very much. And I don't think they, they don't really ever bite either. They're really gentle animals. About the only time that one has taken a swipe at me is if I'm feeding them or you know they think they're getting fed. but. Other than that, they're just really docile and really mellow, non-aggressive uh, pet boas. These nice longicata, longicata, long tail boas. Here's another baby longicata, and overall you can see another one fr fairly similar to the first two I showed you. But I wanted to show you guys this one because this one has this bent tail, kinked and bent tail. And there were a number of animals in this litter that did have the kinking and you know bending of the tail this one was probably the most severe which is why i grabbed them to show you guys but i've seen this kinking not that uncommonly in boa litters you know sometimes you will get a kinking of the spine that's um in front of the tail that's sometimes will cut off the flow of the digestion and in that case the animals are not going to make it but typically if you have a kink in the tail it's not going to interfere with the quality of the life of the animal and the animal can live a full healthy life um, and you know that was fortunately the case of the animals in this litter they just had this kinking of the tail let me uh, zoom in and show you the tail a little closer there you see the tail and this one the tail is a little shorter than normal and a little fatter than normal and there's this kind of bend to it i don't know how well it comes through but there's like a bend right about there and that's uh, it's not a straight tail so the kinking can be caused by a number of things you know one thing that can cause it is if you incubate the female at too high of a temperature in this case I'm pretty confident that's not what caused it because I really closely monitored the temperatures and the females or of all my litters were at pretty much between 85 and about 90 degrees the hot spot doesn't go above 91 degrees so I don't think it was heat this particular litter was relatively large 17 babies which is my largest litter so far this year and there were some slugs in there as well and the female as you saw in the in the beginning of the video she's a pretty small animal so I think what caused it was that there were just so many babies in there they were just kind of pushed up against each other and sometimes depending on how they um, are you know in the uh, uterus of the female sometimes they kind of will wrap around each other maybe wrap around a slug so i think that's what caused the kinking in this case the animals were kind of bent up against something that kind of um, made them form the tails form in that shape and they got the kinking so i don't think that this is a genetic thing but you know regardless these animals i would not recommend be bred um, even if it's not completely genetic there's always maybe the genetic predisposition they may also have issues with breeding because of the shape of the tail. 
So in this case, I'm going to sell these animals at a reduced price. I will sell them unsexed, just as pets, okay? Because these animals I do not recommend for breeding, so please don't breed them. But if you'd like a really nice pet Longicotta at a uh, reduced price, some of these will be available. So it's a good option if you, if you are looking for an animal, but uh, don't have all that much money to put uh, to spend on it. So stay tuned and some of these kinked as well as the non-kinked Longicottas will be available in a couple months. Here's another baby Longicotta that kind of stands out. And so this one, as you can see, has some partial striping towards the tail. And sometimes I'll see this partial striping, these animals. Usually you have an area that would normally uh, have like, you know, three or four saddles that just has this stripe. And um, this is about as long as I've see, seen it. I haven't seen any animals that have like, a, you know, a third or half their body that's striped. But, you know, I have seen like in some of my other bows, like the claw key bows, I get animals with like one third to one half the body striped. But the longicotta just seems to be a reduced amount of striping. But there's a possibility you could selectively breed for animals with striping if you just, you know, selected each generation for the most striped. So this could be the start of some kind of a morph project. And there's the close up of the tail. And this animal is moving a little bit, but you know, you can see that she's, he or she is not even moving her tail, so I can continue filming. This animal also has a very slight kink in the tip of the tail. This one is not nowhere near as pronounced as the animal I just showed you, but just a very slight amount of kinking. Um, but it does have this striping towards the tail, which is quite, no quite noteworthy. Now that we've seen some of the babies, I thought I'd show you the father of the litter. This male was also produced by Sonia Komu from the Vinruso bloodline. And he's overall, he's similar looking to the female, of the, the mother of the litter, but he's not quite as dark. And what kind of characterizes him is he has much more well-defined saddles. You can see he's got kind of these blocky dark saddles and then you can see the lighter, you know, caramel yellow, brown color in between. But he's got this overall really dark appearance, the dark speckles on the belly and this beautiful stripes on his head. So another really spectacular looking Longicotta. This guy is about the same size as the female, about six feet. Uh, the Longicotta tend to be not quite as thick and muscular as like the true red tails. So a six foot animal is going to weigh quite a bit less than a six foot true red tail. And they're just great boas to work with. These Longicotta have kind of a cult following. You know, people that keep them really, really like them. Although they're not really well known to the general public, the general, you know, boa keeping population. You don't really see them in pet shops or anything like that. So they're kind of an undiscovered secret. And I think when people get into them, they really, really get into them. Um, and a lot of people just keep the Longicottas and they don't really work with anything else. So great boa to work with. And so some of these babies, actually most of the babies are going to be available, if not all of them, because I'm not even sure if I'll hold back any of them. Uh, but these babies are going to be available probably in about a month and a half or so. Usually they're pretty easy to get established and uh, almost all of them are feeding already. So I just have to go feed them a few more times, probably a total of, you know, maybe three to five times total. Uh, I, ideally, I like to see them have a second shed. This kind of makes me feel a little bit better about how well established they are. But then they'll be ready to go to their new homes. And as I mentioned, some of them do have these minor kinks in the tail. And so these animals with the tail kinking will be offered at a discount. And my policy with animals like this, I don't sex them because I don't want them to be bred. So I just offer them as a pet at a discount. But if you're looking for a really, really nice bow with a very minor imperfection as a pet, I would highly recommend you know, looking into one of these. Um, you know, you can save quite a bit of money over buying one that doesn't have the kink and the animal is pretty much just as good. It just has this very minor imperfection. Luckily, none of the animals in the litter have any kind of imperfection that's going to affect their health. So this is just a minor cosmetic flaw to the tail. Um, you may have seen dogs and cats that have similar kinking. It's 
common not just in reptiles but it's also in mammals as well and you know I remember having this cat as a uh, pet cat as a kid that had this really really kink tail it was like short now bent up and apparently uh, it was somehow genetic because the mother of the litter of the cats also had this kind of kinking so unless it's just a coincidence which it you know could well be but you know I'm not an expert in cat genetics so I should just shut myself my, shut my mouth and just stick to the boa talk. Okay, so that was my longicata litter. Really happy with these animals. And um, really nice examples of long-tailed boas if you've been looking for one. So please stay tuned and I'll give further updates on when they're going to be available. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to shoot me a line. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.